Howdy everyone and welcome back to the Control Geek. In the last video, I have illustrated the constraint MPC problem and went through the involved vectors and matrices. At the end, I promised to present an example with MATLAB to show how we can implement the MPC problem. In this video, I am going to present that MATLAB script. Before jumping into the code, let us go quickly through the involved vectors and matrices of constrained MPC. The last MPC problem we saw in the last video has the following form. We have a cost function that involves basically three variables along some prediction horizon of NP. The variables are, the controlled process output Y of K, the change in the control move delta U of K, and slack variable capital M of K. This cost function is subjected to some constraints as shown. The first constraint is the process dynamic which is given in the form of state space. The second constraint is on the control move and control changes. While the last constraint is on the process controlled output. In this constraint we have three sub-constraints which are the upper and lower bounds of the output itself, in addition to the limits on the slack variable. We need to formulate both the cost and the constraints along the horizon and P in a quadratic function in terms of the predicted control move as well as the slack variable. Let us start with the process state space representation. We have seen that this constraint can be written as y equal to capital phi by x0 plus capital gamma by the control move the vector. All of the quantity definitions are given above. Please pause the video and take some time to observe or write down these definitions as you will need them later in the code. Before proceeding with the remaining constraints, let us see how we dealt with the cost terms. Starting with the first term which is. This term was formulated as the last step shown below. Where the formula is the formula of quadratic function. Let us take another term which is the control changes. We need to formulate this term as a quadratic function as well. To do that, we can expand it as shown and with associated terms underneath each quantity, we have the following quadratic function form. Just observe the last term in this new formula. We have the quadratic of the u of minus 1, which is already known and applied on the process. Thus, this term will be constant and do not affect the future values of the predicted control actions. Going back to our MPC problem. Let us leave the terms related to the slack variable capital M in the cost for later and pick up the constraints on the control moves and changes first. The constraint which is shown by the red box, is on the control moves. This constraint can be easily expand as shown. And the final term is simply given by. The second set of constraints is on the control changes as shown by the red box. As with the control move constraints, this set can also be expanded in terms of vectors and matrices as shown, which is simply written as. Here, it is important to observe the first term in the upper and lower bounds delta u minimum and delta u maximum which have the control action u of minus 1. Thus, we need to update this bounds for each new sampling and before solving the MPC problem. Now, we are ready to deal with slack variables in the cost as well as in the constraints. The two terms in the cost function related to the slack variable capital M are shown by the red box. The terms are formulated in quadratic format as shown, where the involved matrix and vectors are given as. Now as we have two variables in the MPC problem, namely the control moves as well as the slack variables, we need to reformulate our original MPC problem in term of these variables. Thus, the new MPC problem is given as 
where the new matrices of capital H and small case F are given by. The new MPC problem requires a slight change in the way we have formulated the previous constraints. For the constraints on the control moves, we can write the following. Whereas for the control changes, we can make the following change. We have to see the formulation of the last three constraints in our MPC problem in term of the new optimization variable. Considering the process output constraints first as shown by the red box. The upper bound constraint can be written as If you go back to the last video, where its link is given in the description, you will notice that we have utilized the first constraint which was on the process model for this formulation. The lower bound is shown next which is formulated in the same way. The very last constraint is on the slack variable. This is illustrated by the red box. To formulate this constraint, we follow the same steps in the control moves and changes. Where, we first expand the constraint along the horizon in vector form. And then write the stack format as shown. Now, as we have formulated all of the constraints, we can write the full combination of them as shown, or in term of the associated quantities. The final format of our MPC cost function is which is subjected to both hard constraints on the control moves and changes as well as soft constraints on the process output. The constraints can be written in much simpler way as shown. Now let me illustrate the MATLAB script for our MPC problem. Basically, we have three files as shown. The main file is the one that runs the MPC problem while the other two files support the main file by some computations. Starting with the main file. The file first gives the process state space matrices. Here, we have a stable open loop process with two inputs and two outputs. The second portion of the file gives values for the weights used in the cost function including the slack variable. OK, let me show another part of the file. Here, the first portion gives some information for the simulation which includes the initial condition, values of the tracking reference and value of the control action at time k-1. The second portion gives the prediction horizon which is set to 5 and with the assistance of the MPC matrices file, it computes the prediction of the process output which we have assigned in the shown equation. The last portion, introduces the values for the constraints that we have considered so far. Note that we have given the infinity a value of 10 to the power of 5. Let us go to another part of the file. This part has two important portions. The first portion expands the given weights along the horizon. Exception of that is the way on the control changes. This needs a little bit more work which is computed in the constraints and weights file. The last portion here set up the MPC main matrices. Remember that we have the following MPC problem. So, the matrix H is formulated as shown. Whereas the matrix A is shaped as shown, followed by the matrix F. These two matrices are for the constraints. Please explore the constraints and weights file for more details. The next part of the main file shows the actual implementation of the MPC control loop. It starts with a loop where the followings are looping. First is the part of the MPC cost. This matrix is shown by matrix F in the original problem. There are two quantities that need update here. First is the process state which is given by X sub 0. And second is the U of K minus 1 which is multiplied by the matrix psi. The next step that is looping is the solution of the MPC problem. 
Here, I am using the Quad Prog Solver in MATLAB. This solver gives the solution in term of the variable capital U. Do not forget that this variable has two sub-variables which are the control moves and the slack variable. We only need the first two terms from the capital U, which are injecting into the system that is shown by the red box. The next step would be updating the process states x sub 0, the value of u at k minus 1, the constraints on the control changes, as well as the matrices C minimum and C maximum. The last portion of the looping is saving data for plots. The very last part of main file is the part that plots the results. Before running the main file, please make sure that you have the optimization toolbox installed in your MATLAB for the quad prog file to work. If you run the main file, you should get a plot similar to shown here. You can find a copy of the MATLAB files in the description. I have left some of the computations unexplained as a homework for you to figure them out. Also, I did not do any analysis to show the MPC performance such as violation of the soft constraints on the output or the feasibility of the problem. The values in the MATLAB main file are set up arbitrarily just to push the problem to work. So please analyze the MPC problem in a wisdom way and tell me your conclusions in the comment section. As always, please do not leave this video without thumping up, ringing the bell and, of course, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.